All right, so what we're taking a look at today is an old Pioneer Auto Reverse Tape Deck, model CT50R. This was made sometime in the mid 80s. Uh, there's a date code on the back of the motor, um, 1984. A friend of mine brought this over to have me take a look at. And at that time, the capstan motor wasn't rotating. So I did a voltage check there, found that there's proper voltage but the motor is not vibrating. It doesn't appear to have any type of restriction on it. The capstan belt is wrapped around the motor, but I can still spin the motor over, but I don't feel anything in the way of activity as far as the motor is concerned. There's just no nobody home. So I thought what we'd do today is maybe get the motor out of it, snap that cap off the back of the motor. There's a governing device in there and see if something burned up whatever and see if we can get it up and running don't have any interest in keeping the tape deck myself i'm not a fan of auto reverse but i thought it'd be fun if we can get it working and play a tape in it and uh maybe uh even try to record a tape in it so that's kind of the goal for today Stamp. all right so with the unit powered on i'll show you the whole motor voltage scenario just tapping on the back of the motor. And there it is. We got the voltage there. But there is just nothing in the way of activity. So getting it apart is going to be fun. There's a lot of things that are holding it in place. So I'm just going to start chopping wire ties apart so we can get the wiring harness is loose maybe get it out let's see let's see what kind of a shot we got for you guys let's see here this is not easy trying to do this with a phone by the way all right so multiple connectors as you would expect everything is nice and plugged so if you do need to take something apart you can certainly do it of course that would go by the wayside a long time ago See, I may have taken out one too many there. They were just kind of all bundled together, so that should be it as far as wires are concerned. So, in the interest of not making the video forever long, we'll pause here and uh, I'll get it out and then we'll resume standby all right so there it is freed out of the thing out of the frame there's a couple of points right underneath here that actually hook in to the front so the face has to come off in an effort to pull it out and tip it back and slide it forward to get it out now that i have it out um, I'm going to uh, inject some voltage at that motor just to see if this bad boy will come come to life. We already know there was voltage there, but I guess this is just a redundancy thing I want to do just to prove to myself that it's absolutely dead. And it is. There's no current draw, so there's no issue there. We got voltage, but we don't have any life. 
So now the next thing is, is getting this damn plate off. And these are always so much fun. So let's chop away at the more wire ties here. Let's see if we can get that back plate off. Looks like there's only three screws holding it in. What I like to do when I'm doing this is just kind of make a mental note of where the wires were located. So when I rebundle them and tie them back up at the end, they're kind of assume that natural laying position that they had before um, I took it all apart. Um, numerous switches on this uh, for cassette in. Uh, I'm sure there's one here for the record detect. Um, multiple solenoids. Lots of different things. These are very, uh, uh, you know, populated decks, I guess you would say. Lots of, uh, lots of mechanisms, lots of things going on. Whereas years later, they would just start eliminating that stuff and uh, making the decks a little bit more simplified. Not better, just simplified. So, let me see where I'm at here. We should be able to get that out of there. that came out that popped out with a little bit of tension on it which leads me to believe there is some kind of spring or something of that nature there uh, so throwing caution to the wind let's just pull it off there's the spring right there looks like all it does is it holds tension on maybe the eject lever it's a pretty high tension spring though. Okay. Okay. Phase two is completed. There it is. Let's see, you can spin. No, you can't either. That was bound up a little bit. I thought I had once spun that over. Let's re-inject the voltage and see what happens. But with that much hesitation on it, I still would think that we would, with it bound up, I would think I would draw current when I put voltage to it. We got voltage, but there ain't nothing happening. Let's see. Yeah, now I'm feeling it. I'm feeling some tension there now. It's trying to take off. It's trying to do something. But it sounds horrible. Uh. All right, so interesting turn of events. So how about a little lubricant? Let's see if that'll get this up and going. Still real noisy though. And easily you can stop it. It's got a dead spot in it. Mm. Okay. All right, stand by. All right, so here it is all taken apart with the motor exposed. And one thing. I did was went back and re-injected some voltage into this and I was able to it was tight and so I was able to spin it over and with a little help it will take off and start working and it makes a horrendous noise and so 
It could just be a lubrication thing. I'm not sure at this point. So again, just continuing on with removing the motor. And uh, see if we can get, uh, get it lubricated to the point to where it might work. It just could be that the tension of the belt pulling on it for so long has kind of worn out the bearing that's inside there. I'm not sure yet, but we'll take the motor apart and we'll see what that's all about. But some motion definitely makes me believe or feel better about the fact that there's nothing wrong with that uh, governing device that's on the back of it. So, what will happen to the belt after so long is that that belt will start to turn gooey and it'll be just really just nasty to try to get, get off. So we'll be going through quite a few cotton swabs in an effort to try to get, get that stuff off there. One thing that I'll do usually is just start to kind of pry on it with a screwdriver, which usually makes more of a mess than it's worth, but it does get, it does get it off. switch over to some acetone which will clean that up hopefully remove a lot of that nastiness off of the pulley because at this point we obviously can't put another belt on it yeah it's not not good Terrible work environment. You can rub on that with as many Q-tips as you want, but it's going to take 30 probably to get it all off there. Once you can get a big chunk of it. best bet is just to put the q-tip down and move on to another one. There we go. There's something though, there's something holding it. I don't know if it's a lubrication issue, I don't know if it's a brush issue. I don't just know what's going on. But obviously if it has a dead spot in it, there ain't going to be nothing we're going to do to it to fix it. Short of getting another motor, which is not going to happen. It's just a fix up project day. Not anything anybody wants to keep. All right, well, this is gonna go on for a little while, so we'll pause so you don't have to suffer through that, and then we'll come back. All right, so I got the motor out of the casing. Uh, popped off that back plate that goes into the housing and got it out. And even after putting some lubrication in it, which I didn't think that was gonna do it, and it did not, it will take off but it still makes a pretty horrendous noise and it does have a dead spot you can stop it right with your finger so maybe the next step since we're really just don't have anything to lose 
is to tear the motor down just a little bit further. Let me get in there and see if there's something that can be done. Maybe. But the noise that it's making leads me to believe that there's a, a rest point that the uh, turbine sits in and that is worn out. But let's get in and see what we can do. So stand by. All right, we got the motor apart now, and it's easy to see where that noise was coming from. There's like a plastic collar that was right on the end of the turbine or shaft, whatever you want to call it, and that's what it was grinding on, making that noise. And to get this plastic cap off of this motor is not very easy. That's one of the reasons why I pause the video because of the time involved to meticulously make sure you don't break anything because you only get one shot at it and so you want to make sure that when you get it out that um, it's uh, you know you're not tearing up the brushes and the dead spot I can see it on the motor and I don't think I would ever be able to capture this on camera it is such a slight just a black spot right there I'll try to see if I can do it, maybe, in case you want to see it. This is going to be like almost near impossible to do, though. I don't know. It's coming into focus a little bit there. Let's see. Oh, let's see here. see it there's a black spot right there and that's where the dead spot is so I think the next step is going to be to try to lightly burnish that I don't want to say sand or file but just lightly get that off there and see if we can rescue the motor so stand by for that and let me see what I can do with it all right, I was able to get the uh, motor turbine shaft, whatever you want to say. I was able to get that uh, kind of tidied up. So what I want to do now, and I also went in between, and it's really difficult because they want to bend so easily in between the brushes and got what residue I could get off of those. So now, Let's see if we can get it back together, which turns out to be a pretty challenging ordeal, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I've done something like this. So, what you have to do is you got to make sure that when you put that into the little spline in the bottom of the cap, is that your brushes don't get pushed and bent because it's not a uh, it's not like a perfect uh, you know smooth surface there's like two stages to it and the brushes want to get caught between that upper stage and so you have to use something to push them out of the way which is the reason that I have this dental instrument here trying to do that and then you gotta look and I think I got it maybe Maybe. It's moving, so let's throw some voltage to it and see see what happens. I don't know if we can get the dead spot out of it, great. But apparently that didn't happen. No, I didn't like that. Let's see if I got something not where it's supposed to be. I thought I got the brushes out okay.
probably what happened is when I was messing around with the center of this shaft is I got them contacting each other now which you're not supposed to do so let's see if we can put a little distance between them and that'll probably help Ooh, that seemed dangerous, like it wanted to break. There we go. Now, let's try this one more time. It's not an easy prospect trying to fix one of these things. And this one is pretty tiny. Well, not as tiny as some, but it's pretty tiny as far as something to work on. That requires usually three hands. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, it seems to move a little bit more freely now, so let's test and see what we got. That is it. Beautiful torque. It will not stop at a at a place anywhere you want to stop it, it takes back off and takes off and goes. Sounds good. No craziness, no noise. Slight vibration, but nothing too nothing too crazy. So now let's stop here and the next step and let me show you this maybe. can that tab right there will have to be bent back and it's kind of an indented tab it's not like a one that just sticks out it's like kind of right in the edge of the frame and those will have to be bent back over once the motor is lined up in this right place like right there so I'll do that and get it reconnected to the uh, governing device and back in the frame and then we'll try it All right, unbeknownst to me, when I took the motor cap off the back, and I'll try to get a shot of this if I can. Let's hold that thought for a second here. Is that the other side, the good side here, which is this side, that tab is laying in there the way it's supposed to lay in there. But on this side, that tab did break off and I didn't even realize I had done it. So what I was able to do is put a screwdriver in there and notch the frame over to where the frame is holding the plastic back cap in place. See there's not a tab like on this side. That tab when I bent it up I didn't even realize I broke it off. But it's very very soft metal and it's easy to damage it. So basically just taking a screwdriver and sticking it in that um, little corner there where the tab broke off, I was able to kind of Y that frame to a point to where the plastic cap can't, uh, can't escape off the back of the motor. And uh, it's just, it's a really tricky thing. It's not easy to do it and uh, it's easy to damage something when you do that. So now let's see if we can get it back into the thing and let me see if I can zoom this out, zoom it in, whatever. And we'll solder it back up to the governing device. And it fits into this guy. There's a rubber damper 
inside the front part of it and that rubber damper, all that really does is just uh, cut down on your noise and if you don't line that up right then your screw holes won't be right. It should be kind of, well I guess it doesn't really have holes in it but what you want to do is you want to push it into there. Get it seated correctly and then push the motor through to the other side. Get it set in place correctly. And then once you have that, make sure it still spins freely. This I think is what I was want to make sure we get lined up right because that hole right there goes to the governing device on the back of the motor so you can adjust the speed. So now, I had originally made a mark on it with a pen so I would know which way it's supposed to be. And here we are with the mark gone. And I'm guessing that this was right. Worst case scenario, we solder it up and it's wrong. I want to unsolder it. I don't want to have to do that. off some of the excessive solder so it's looking easier to get that to slide into the circuit board. There's just a little too much solder there. Let's tab a little solder there and see if our motor's running correctly. Never can. that's there I'll just kind of push down on each side of it ensuring that it's kind of rested in place okay. now this will be a voltage test with the governing device back in it thing. Variable speed and all, maybe. So, yeah, it's doing it. Yep, that's it. Not 
thoroughly happy with the solder joint, so I'm going to redo that and then we're going to clean it off just so it looks good. That way it's not real obvious that somebody's been working on it. You know, clean this, clean that area up a little bit. Now to snap the back cover on, this is important obviously. You want that hole to line up with that potentiometer. Trying to get this snapped back into place is kind of a pain. It might require a little bit of assistance from a screwdriver. It seems like once it hits the good spot there, then it's more difficult to try to pop it and get it over to the other one. There it is. And it's off just a little bit, so let me see. See this part right here, if you can see that, is not lined up over here. It's too far that direction, so I should still be able to pop it off. The way that I got it off before was I put a pair of, I put a, a screwdriver underneath. Don't pry down on this. If you pry down on this in an effort to get the cap off, you're going to snap that off the board. So I stuck a larger screwdriver in here, then put a pair of hemostats across the screwdriver and used that as a fulcrum, I guess you would say, to, to pry up on it some. So now let's see if we can rotate this. I ain't going to be able to do it with it on there, so I don't have to come all the way off again. So, yay for me. Okay. There we go. Just gotta work it little by little. Try not to stab your hand. And try not to do that, which is you got two sides in and you're trying to get the third one and the whole thing pops out. So let's work it again here. And there we go. There we go. Back together. in its original case. We'll throw some voltage to it and try it. It's doing its thing. It's drawing literally zero amperage unless you put a little load on it and then all of a sudden it'll start to draw. And we have access to the potentiometer to increase and decrease the speed. There we go. All right, so now that this is completely exhausted me mentally, I think what we'll do is we'll just make this a part one and then part two, we'll reinstall it and put a belt on it 
and see what it will uh, do as far as playback is concerned. But if nothing else, we did get our motor fixed and uh, it is doing its thing. Good torque, no dead spot, it's working. So we'll call it good for this on part one.